This is just a quick follow-up to the proof that I completed in the last video. In the last video for the two-dimensional elastic collision, I proved that the sum of the scattering angles was 90 degrees for two objects of equal mass where one of the objects was initially at rest. Let's go ahead and use that proof with a specific numerical example. Let me go ahead and read that example to you here. Copy it down into your notes. So we have two objects that undergo an elastic collision in two dimensions. It's called a scattering or a glancing collision. Okay, the objects are of equal mass and the target is initially at rest. Okay, the first object is initially moving at one meter per second along the positive x-axis. Okay, bear with me, I need to move my file here. Okay, that first object then glances off of the second object at a 30 degree angle. Find the final speeds of both objects and the scattering angle of the second object. In a problem such as this, you are always going to be given one of the angles. And the reason for that is as follows. One of the things that we're ignoring in these problems are the dimensions of the objects themselves as they scatter off of each other. We're just treating the objects as points. But of course, they're not. They have a finite size associated with them. So for example, let me illustrate here with these two tennis balls. Let's say that I take the two tennis balls and I offset them from each other like so slightly, so that when they collide, the situation perhaps looks something like this. That's gonna be a little bit different, however, if I take the two tennis balls and I off that, offset them from each other even more, such that when they glance off of each other, it looks something like this. So in other words, the dimensions of the balls themselves determines how the forces occur between the two balls when they collide. This then gives us one of the scattering angles. This is a detail, of course, that we are ignoring in a problem such as this. We're just treating the objects as points. So then therefore, for that reason, one of the scattering angles is always going to be a given. All right, so with that in mind then, our problem basically is as follows. All right, so here's our object of mass m initially moving along the positive x-axis with a v1 naught of one meter per second. Okay, here's the target of mass m, and then the collision occurs like so. The first object scatters off like this with an unknown v1 final, and then with respect to the positive x-axis, right here, its scattering angle is a given at 30 degrees. Okay, and then the second object, the target is gonna scatter off like so, still of mass m, with an unknown final velocity v2 final, but this scattering angle right here, phi, is in fact equal to 60 degrees, but it is in the fourth quadrant on the diagram. Therefore, I will have to treat it as a negative number. But the sum of the scattering angles, 30 plus 60, is 90 degrees. That, of course, goes back to the proof in the previous video. Okay, now what we do is we set up our conservation of momentum in both the x and y directions and then we take a look at the math that is necessary to then find V1 final and V2 final. So let's go ahead and set this up in the X direction first. All right, so here's the notation that you're gonna see. Change your momentum of number one in the X direction plus change of momentum of number two in the X direction is equal to zero, and now we just start filling in our terms. So in the X direction, the final momentum of the first object is gonna be M V1 final times the cosine of theta. So, and then minus m times v1 naught. And then for object number two, its final momentum here in the x direction is going to be m v2 final and then cosine of phi. And then minus zero because that object is initially at rest, like so. And at this point, let's go ahead and start simplifying things. Let's immediately start plugging in our numbers. So to do so, let's initially cancel out the mass m, like so. And now we have the following. Okay, V1 final times the cosine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and calculate that out, and I'll do so here on my calculator. That's perfectly fine. So cosine of 30 is about 0.87. So I have here 0.87 times V1 final, like so, and then minus one for V1 naught. And then I have right here, V2 final times the cosine of negative 60. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in cosine of negative 60, that's equal to 0.5. So then therefore 0.5 times V2 final equals zero. And then boom, right there is so far one equation and two unknowns, V1 final and V2 final. So now I need a second equation. My second equation, of course, is gonna be conservation of momentum in the Y direction. So let's go ahead and set that up. 
Okay, first of all, the notation. So change of momentum of number one in the y direction plus change of momentum of number two is equal to zero. Start filling in our terms. So first of all, the change of momentum of number one in the y direction. So we'll have m and then times v1 final sine of theta. And then minus the initial in the y direction, which is zero, because remember that the first object, by definition, is moving along the positive x-axis prior to the collision. Okay, and then the target, final momentum in the y direction is going to be m v2 final sine phi. And then minus the initial, which is at zero, because the target begins at rest, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel out the mass m, like so. And now let's go ahead and start plugging in our numbers. So right here, I have, first of all, the sine of 60 degrees, or sine of 30 degrees, excuse me, which is a half. So sine of 30, and then 0.5 times V1 final. Okay, and now we have to do sine of negative 60. So you gotta be careful of your negative sign. So sine of negative 60 is negative 0.87. So negative 0.87 times V2 final. Like so, and now right here is the second of my two equations and two unknowns. So you just gotta be a little bit careful that the geometry here, we note on the diagram above that the scattering angle phi is in fact in the fourth quadrant, so then therefore we have to make it a negative 60 degree angle. This ensures now that with my two equations and two unknowns, the V1 final and V2 final will both be positive numbers as speeds, as they should be. Okay, so let's erase the stuff I don't need at this point. Let's get rid of all of this stuff here. And then on the top board, let's get rid of this stuff here. And now let's just go ahead and complete the math. Okay, so to complete the math, what I'm gonna do is take this expression here and solve for one of the unknowns and then plug it up into the other expression. So let's go ahead and solve for V1 final. So to do so, let's take this term and move it to the other side. Like so, and then let's go ahead and divide by a half here to get V1 final by itself. Okay, I'll do this on my calculator. So 0.87 and then divide it by a half, and that comes out to be 1.74 times V2 final like so. And now I'll take that expression for V1 final, and then it will go up to the top equation and plug that in right here. So now I have 0.87 times V1 final. So 0.87 and then multiply by 1.74 V2 final like so, and then minus one, we'll actually put the minus one to the other side. And then I have plus 0.5 times V2 final. And then as I said, move the one to the other side. Like so. Okay, let's finish up. Let's do this multiplication right here. So 0.87 times 1.74. This comes out to be about 1.5. So, and then add these guys up. When you do, you get two V2 final. And then divide by two, and V2 final is equal to one half or 0.5 meters per second. And now that I have that speed for V2 final, then the last step is just to jump to right here and then solve for V1 final. Okay, so V1 final then therefore is gonna be 1.74 multiplied by a half, which is 0.87 meters per second, like so. The reason why, by the way, the numbers are working out the way they do, this right here is a half, this right here is actually root three over two, is because this is a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, okay? But that's how you do a numerical example involving the two-dimensional elastic collision where you have objects of equal mass.